how to shift your mindset for better weight loss. Booty Bands and Barbells helps busy women sculpt and tone their bodies in just 15 minutes a day through our physical products and our one-on-one -on -one coaching. What is the mindset doing as you're going through this process? Because that is a huge, huge key component of actually being successful in weight loss. When you're used to and you're past doing a particular thing and it giving you a sense of control, for lack of a better word, like you gravitate towards it when things get hard. Even though I saw in the progress pick and the back, I definitely like noticed a difference. Like it was hard for me to put a mirror up to myself and see just how far down the line I've come all these years. And so like in my mind, I wanted to go back to, you know, not eating or purging. It's a comfort zone because it had been so long of me doing that, even though I know it doesn't work. Interesting. So yeah, even though the mind knows that it's not going to work, but it's almost like a place of comfort because you've done it in the past. It's where you were. It didn't work, but somehow it's like, well, maybe it'll work this time. Let me just try it one more time. It sounds crazy, but let's do it again. I love, I love that you just said that. That's like, sounds crazy, but I mean, yeah, sometimes it doesn't take, it takes like the third or fourth time for us to kind of finally have it click. Like how many times do we need to continue to keep failing before we actually make that change? The definition of crazy is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome. That's what, like for a split second, I was like, you know what? I should probably text her what I'm thinking so I can say it out loud to myself and know that it's not benefit me to keep going backwards. It hasn't worked. I love that you shared it with me. I really did because a lot of women that are going to be listening to this podcast can absolutely relate. So let's go ahead and back up just so that everybody is kind of following the same page here. So Ashley, you're going through the program and we're taking it one step at a time, sending food, sending the measurements, sending the photos, and we get your next photos in and kind of tell me you know, your mindset when you took the photos, you put them side by side, you're looking at them, kind of walk me through that experience. Like I know that I've made huge amounts of progress and I have an Apple watch. And when I first, you know, got my Apple watch, I was on like the third dot, like to keep my watch snug. And now I'm on the fifth. So I know that there's been progress. I'm seeing it. I'm feeling it my life has been affected in a lot of positive ways. But in that split second, like with where you're at, you kind of just, um, you backtrack for a second because you wish that you look like somebody else. I, I appreciate you sharing that because I think so many can relate. How were you able to shift that mindset, pull in and kind of still stay on course? What, what was that shift for you? It's the accountability and having somebody to reach out to. So in that moment where I would have been just in my head and in my thoughts and, and my feelings, you and I have texted before and you kind of said like, okay, we'll just give that to me. Like, let me bear that, that weight. You know, even I think it was a couple of nights ago when I really just was emotional and I didn't want to work out. And I was like, okay, what can I do? And um, you gave me a couple of suggestions. I ended up doing a workout. It went from like tears of like, I feel terrible right now to tears of joy because I couldn't believe how much better I felt after just doing something so simple as a stretch. Um, it was a win for me because I didn't give in to those feelings. And that's how it felt when I, you know, sent you that text and said, you know, like, hey, right now I could either stay the course or I could either go back to, you know, pretty much starving myself. And so just having that person to reach out to in that moment to be vulnerable and not be judged was pretty huge. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for sharing that. I remember going through the weight loss journey. I looked at workouts as almost what you just mentioned, a form of punishment. When I eat something bad, then I need to go and punish myself to burn the calories off, right? So that's kind of that mindset of calories in, calories out. So I was like, well, if I ate too many calories that day, then yeah, I needed to go sweat it out. And, and it almost kind of turned into a punishment. Like my workouts would, I would, I would look for the most extreme workouts I possibly could. Like I had to make sure I was burning, sweating, and it was the longest workout I could possibly find. Because if I went to, I actually do remember this. I remember if I thought if I just did a stretch, it wasn't 
hard enough. Like I needed to almost beat my body up because I needed to discipline myself because I ate that cake. And it was like my belief system for so many years in the beginning of weight loss. And it really made me actually hate wanting to work out. It made it more of a a bad thing. It made me like really resent working out because it was just this like punishment. And I think a lot of women have that same experience and then also have that really terrible relationship with food because there's so many diets out there that's like all about restrictions. So as soon as they eat it, then it's all of a sudden this guilt and shame. And so this like this whole mindset with weight loss can really kind of just put you in that whirlwind. I want to see if there's anything that comes for comes up for you as far as just the mindset that goes on during that. I think the biggest thing that sticks out for me is there was a time where I hired um, an acquaintance that was a personal trainer. And I remember he pushed me so hard that um, it felt like such punishment. And it was, I was so sore. (laughs) This is terrible. I took a Vicodin, like a half a Vicodin. And I didn't know I was allergic. And I ended up like passing out and like waking up like completely hoarse because my airway had started to close, like literally the most extreme. And so um, that is indicative of my journey with workout. Like I'd be like, Oh, well I ate X, Y, and Z. I really have to like go balls to the wall and make sure that I burn off what I did. It wasn't that food was my fuel. It was that food was my enemy and the workout was the beast that was going to conquer it. Wow. Right. I remember that same that same feeling. And so many women really struggle with that. And so my, my question to break free of that, what are some steps that you've been able to do to really improve that way of thinking? I think probably the biggest thing has been to recognize that I am in control of my thoughts and what I'm fueling my body with. And taking the time to really think of myself more. Um, So when I'm putting meals together, I'm really a lot more conscious of what it is that I'm having, but also not beating myself up if I step across the, you know, so to speak line, like I'll go, okay, I had, you know, that piece of pizza, but let's, you know, as you have kind of taught me, balance it out, let me have the salad with it. And I might finish it off with like my protein shake. Um, so instead of having three and four pieces of pizza, I'm having one. Um, so it's really just been a lot more about balancing what it is that I'm feeling my body with instead of, you know, it's funny. I was talking with my coworkers, telling them about the program and, um, one of the ladies was like, yeah, I wish you had told me all this before I had my pizza last night. Cause like, she really overdid it. And I'm like, yeah, like. I can have a slice of pizza now and there's not that overwhelming sense of, oh my gosh, now I have to like do this extreme amount of cardio, you know, to the point of not being able to really function. Like, you know, there, you see these memes like on social media where people are like leg day and they can like hardly like (laughs) sit down the next day. And I've realized that there's just such a happy medium between what I'm fueling my body with and the type of workouts that I'm doing to be able to have that balance of working out, feeling good after I work out instead of feeling punished. I think you nailed it. That word balance is such a huge word that really resonates with me as I think about my same journey with weight loss and having to shift the mindset first. And you don't realize how much of it is a mindset shift as you're going through the journey. You think it's just more about your body and diet. Like you're just like workouts and diet. That's what's going to help me get to my goals. When really you have a lot of people just don't realize the mindset is such a huge key about that. And, and balance. Yeah. Balance in this all in all out extremes. And that's how I was too. And I think that's how a lot of the diet culture has been formed is this like all in all out extremes. And it's sad that even personal trainers, I see so many, like when I was a personal trainer and a, and a gym, so many of the clients just wanted to be yelled at, like, just, they're like, just yell at me. And, and I had clients even tell me that they're like, if you just yell at me and you just almost like, AKA beat me up, punish me. Like, I'm like, uh, that's not the trainer that I am. And so it was interesting how they're like, oh, well what do you do then? And I'm like, we're going to go about this with love. (laughs) We're going to go about this with grace and like that balance that you said, right. 
Um, to be able to be throwing up after your workout is never going to be the type of training that I'm going to do because I've been there. I know what that feels like. And it's just, that doesn't last. It's just so short lived of just constantly just going to one side to the next and then one side to the next. And so I love that you're able to even, I mean, it's a ripple effect. What you're doing is you're you're there at work talking to your coworkers and now allowing them to see like, Hey, you can still have pizza, but it doesn't have to be this extreme of eating like four or five or six, or honestly, I can, I can eat an entire thing of pizza. Like I can just go through, it's crazy. But if you add a salad or some chicken or something as far as more protein with it and balance it, just like you said, that word balance, it's all of a sudden now I don't eat an entire thing of it. I eat like one or two slices, which is so healthy. It's so, it allows you to still like, it's that, it's that food freedom, right? Allows you that you can still enjoy all the things that life has to offer as far as food but you're not putting yourself in this like food prison. If you ate it, then you got to all of a sudden go beat yourself up with all this intense cardio. What was that shift for the, that shift in that moment of realizing, okay, that's comfort and I'm going to stick with it. What was that? What was that kind of bridge of the, of the difference? I think a lot of the programs and things that I've done before, I was looking for somebody to help hold me accountable in a positive, like you said, loving like way. And not feeling like I had to hide what it was that I was eating or putting into my body because the workout would be punishing. And so I think the big bridge for me has just been um, being able to be more open, more honest, and recognizing that I'm human and I'm fallible, um, but also that it's okay for me to have that piece of pizza Um, and that it's not wrong. You know, I think before, like my idea of eating was like, okay, healthy eating is having a salad that has minimal dressing. Um, I work somewhere where the ladies would actually have like their little teeny, um, like, uh, Rubbermaid, you know, thing. And they would literally dip like their little piece of lettuce in it. And I was like, oh God, I'm such a fatty because I actually put it on my salad. (laughs) You know, like, I'd be like, oh, gosh, let me eat another bite. So, you know, now I can eat my salad and have chicken on it, too, or, you know, my vegan chicken, whatever. So. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, I, it's it's funny. I uh, Definitely the comparison sometimes when you look at people and you're like, oh, I used to think like, oh, that person just has a fast metabolism and that's why they can get away with eating all this. Little did I know that you have all the possibilities to speed your metabolism based off of uh, your lean muscle mass. And so being able to, I thought I was always just big boned, right? I was like, well, I'm big boned and I'll never be petite. And I just, you create these like beliefs in your mind. And I was like, well, they have a fast metabolism. I'm just stuck with my genetics. I used my age, my genetics, big boned. Like I used all these kind of different reasons as to why I was the way I was. And it wasn't until obviously knowledge is your superpower. And it gives you a lot more of that control to realize like, hey, I I do have more control over my metabolism than I think. Uh, it doesn't matter by your age, you can speed your metabolism, start to cut that fat, especially with having that balance. Like you mentioned, that was such a big word to, to really lean into, um, especially. And, and some of the things I actually want to go over with you right now, for those that are listening, I want to go into balance a little bit more. So we talked about pizza, but let's say somebody's having a sweet tooth per se, right? And so my question I have for you is, if somebody was trying to use AKA balance with their weight loss and they wanted to have, let's say cereal in the morning, what would you think? Like what would be a swap or something that they can still have their cereal? What would you put as like a recommendation them for their, for them? Um, So I would say like, I hate oatmeal, but um, I was craving like a cinnamon roll like type thing recently And so instead of having the cinnamon roll, I made my oatmeal taste like cinnamon roll. Um, I used a little bit of brown sugar and the cinnamon and I used my oat milk butter. So it's plant-based. And for me, that was enough to be able to go, okay, this was actually really tasty. Like for somebody who doesn't like oatmeal, I actually ended up eating it like three days in a row. (laughs) So it gave me exactly what it is that I need. So I think it's just sometimes about like finding the alternative instead of being like an all or nothing, like mentality where you have to either punish yourself for something that you had 
or just go without, I've found the balance between replicating it with something that's a little bit healthier. Wow. That's great because obviously that added more fiber, right? Instead of just straight, um, like all the unhealthy carbs and obviously just straight sugar and cinnamon. So, wow, that's a great swap. Okay. Um, so what about like a fettuccine Alfredo? What would you do with something like that? Um, so for like a fettuccine Alfredo, like now I use like a chickpea pasta. Um, so instead of, you know, like, um, straight pasta, like I used to have, I would use the chickpea and, um, just being more plant-based, I have found that you can actually use different nuts and things like that to actually replicate the same taste of a quote unquote cheesy Alfredo with some nutritional yeast. So I think sometimes it's really just, um, you know, they say like, um, knowledge is power. So I think in the day and age where you have all these different search engines and things to locate things, sometimes I look in your app, sometimes I'll text you and sometimes I'll just Google, you know, alternatives to be able to get what I need. I was just looking to see how many inches you've lost so far in your waist. And we have a total of three inches. Um, and so I wanted to ask you about the difference of looking at a scale now and looking at measurements and taking photos what was that shift for you and how has that been? The biggest ordeal for me is that I'm not looking at the scale, whereas I used to literally wake up and I would sneak the scale out from my hidden place in the closet. And I found a really good spot on my tile where I knew that like I felt like, yeah, it's leaning more towards the direction I want it to. And I would weigh myself like every morning, you know, after like I you know you know first thing after I got up I'd, I'd take care of it so I'm like that's the best time to do it I'm gonna weigh the least um and now I'm not worried about the scale I'm worried more so about how I feel um and I think for me the biggest thing has been with actually measuring myself it's a difference and you seeing and feeling you know um the fat melting off, you know, as you and I kind of talked about. And for me being a more visual person, that's something that I needed versus obsessing over if I gained an ounce on a scale. Because if I gained an ounce on a scale before, I was going into like true fasting. Because that's how we've been taught is to calories in, calories out. Okay, you gained an ounce on a scale, go starve yourself. That's what I was yeah. taught. And then what was crazy is like, I would do it, but then it was like, how come that ounce didn't leave? I would just find myself almost gaining more weight. And that's like, the, again, going back to like the form of crazy, you keep repeating the same thing. And it's like, why are we yo-yo? Like, why is the scale not moving? And it's so interesting how much I have actually just speaking to women and finding that the most obese women are the ones that are doing that. They're AKA starving themselves. And then they're going through this purge binging because they're, they're, they have no energy because they're not eating. Right. And then their body is just um, holding and storing the fat. And then eventually they get to a point with starving themselves for so long that anything that comes in front of them, they almost just eat everything because they're so hungry. And so then it just creates this really vicious cycle that we've all been taught. I feel like all of us I don't know, I, especially women that are over 30s at this point. I don't know how it's the industry has changed for all these younger gals. But I think all of us that are over in our 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, it's like we've really been like taught this really insane mental way of losing weight. And so, yeah, that's a great shift um, as far as you visually and kind of seeing it now. So tell me what that was like looking at the photos initially and then as we kind of really looked at them and started to see really where the weight is, the fat is melting off. What was that kind of aha moment and seeing how your body is responding to it? Um, so I think for me, like I know I shared with you initially, like I was kind of like, mm, I'm not really sure if I was seeing it. I remember you were like, OK, well, like almost take your mind out of it and really let your eyes do the work and see where you're seeing the areas of improvement. Um because again, like your, your mindset creeps into it and you're like, well, I don't really know. Is there progress? Who knows? You know, no, nah, that's not really progress. But then I had to actually just take myself, you know, out of that equation, so to speak, and just go, okay, if this was like any person, like, what are you looking at here? I saw in the photos where I definitely noticed that my back was slimmer. 
I noticed that my belly had definitely trimmed up and it was just kind of like, okay, eating's not harmful. Like it's not, it's not making you look the way that your mind is tricking you into it. So then it became, you know, kind of like that, um, the YouTube doctor that um, you had kind of mentioned. And I was like, it's really about my mindset and just going, I am beautiful. I am enough. And what I'm doing is working. Like I can't keep going backwards. Backwards wasn't working. Absolutely. Wow. It's just a really cool mindset shift to see all of this and just honestly really observe it as you're going through the, the accountability program. Just, I, I love that you've been open and you're sharing what your thoughts are and you're like, oof, my mind wanted to go backwards, but like we're catching and I'm sharing that with you. And I, it's such a vulnerable thing to do. And I just wanted to really commend you on this interview today because that takes a lot of shifting in the mindset to do that because your brain is in this pattern and it's this neurological loop that only knows its comfort. And to be able to revert out of that and create a different loop is extremely powerful. That literally is in the conscious part right here, creating new neurons that is creating a different pathway. It's having to unlearn all of the things that we've been taught. Some women don't change. They just are in in that their entire life that just don't make that shift. And when I did it was so groundbreaking for me that I had to share with other women. It was like, I had to, I had to show them the other side of what self-love versus self-sabotage really is. And I know that you, that term self-love is used so often, but the weight loss industry is such a self-sabotage loop. When I see your pictures, I immediately was like, I want her body. I want her curves because for me, I grew up like a little tomboy. I had no boobs. I had no curves. I was a complete stick my whole life that just had fat growing on a stick. And I was just like, what the hell? I wanted curves. I wanted to be feminine. And so it's so interesting, as you mentioned at the very beginning of the call that you were like, I immediately saw myself. And you wanted to see almost just like a different person. Like I look at you and I see somebody who is confident. And it's not maybe necessarily that I want your body, but that I want that peace, if that makes sense. It, again, it's all mindset, like and how you look at things and recognizing that it's not necessarily the physical shape of your being that, you know, you're unhappy with. It's the peace that you're reaching and searching after. And I am beginning to have that peace now because I don't have to worry about the choices that I'm making because I'm so much more informed to be able to make good choices. I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. The control I'm starting to see you start to obtain is really beautiful and it's really beautiful to observe. And, and the piece that you're talking about is really going inward and asking yourself the question, why am I not having that peace? And I used to not have it either. And I'm going to just tell you mine. I always had a belief deep to my core of I'm not enough. And that was the reason why I would attract the wrong men or go through this weight loss journey of binging and losing weight and gaining weight and then eating and et cetera, et cetera. That was where it stemmed from. And then also the I'm not enough became into a people pleasing where I take care and focus on all these other people rather than I would myself. And then also that I'm not enough would also go into overworking. And so I found all this disorder in my life. And I, it wasn't until I really looked within and found the, the phrase again, it's I am blank. I am not enough. Right. And so everybody has their own. And, uh, as soon as I started to find out first where it came from, when was a time in your life that it, it was, I am enough. And then when did it shift? And for me, it came from when my parents got divorced, I created a belief about myself that I'm not enough because if I was enough, my dad would have stayed in my life. And so I created that belief and I had to go back to that time in my life and rewrite the story. 
I had to, I had to tell myself that the truth was, is I was enough and that my dad's decisions has nothing to do with me. And as soon as I separated that and started to really let go of other people's opinions or choices and et cetera, et cetera, have nothing to do with the root core of me is when I started to really look in the mirror and I had to go, I am enough because, because if you say it and you don't believe it, then it's never going to work. And that's why affirmations actually have been proven to not work if you don't believe them. So you have to say, I am enough because, and so I had to start finding areas in my life that I was enough. And then as I started to really find myself as a whole person and no longer have that root pain, then I stopped overworking. I stopped over people pleasing. I stopped over trying to create my body in this like really sick pattern or whatever. And all these disorderly things started to actually come together. And that is what you're seeing is peace. I have always been somebody because of my upbringing that wanted to people please. And I'm slowly working at it. But one of the things that you had me print out was the I am. And it says, I'm a badass. I am worthy. And um, my mom came over and she goes, oh, well, that's nice language. (laughs) And like, normally I'd have been like, rip. And I would have taken it off and crumbled it up and threw it away. And I was like, yeah, it is. (laughs) And it's still up in my closet today. Um, because it's a reminder that I needed that I've been through so much and I've overcome so much and that I am good enough and I am strong enough and that the little baby steps that I'm taking, I'm not giving up. Can you just feel the power of those that are listening right now? Can you just feel the power of when she speaks that and immediately it's truth. That's the only thing that comes up immediately. She's aligned. That is the alignment. When somebody's like, I'm enough, I'm worthy, I'm deserving, that one sentence, what are you saying I am? And what is it after that? I love that you have that printed up. That's so beautiful. And so those that are listening right now on the call, I want you to really, really think about that. What are you saying after I am? Because the truth is, you are worthy. You are good enough. You are lovable. That is your truth. And it's your power. And if you're looking for peace, or if you're looking for any answer on your life in general, that is the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway I could possibly give you. So thank you, Ashley, for just being here today and having this deep conversation with me. I truly believe that this will help touch many lives. If it's not today, it's going to be in years to come that creates a ripple effect. And so I just wanted to thank you for showing up today. Thank you. If you are interested in the Sculpt and Tone accountability program with Coach Danita, go ahead and click the link down below and schedule a call with a coach now. There are limited spots available and we do need full commitment. If you're ready for a transformation, if you're ready for interest to be lost and you're ready for it to be easier, then this is your sign. Let's get started.